Watch it. Thank you. 
this change has been adopted by other movements. Other deputy sites have been put in place and included the change in the rules passed on how the court can rule on the site of the issue of the Constitution of the United States. Well, Mr. Chairman, uh, obviously you and I both got into the race last time, but I believe that in one suggestion uh, related to uh, ruling on uh, the website uh, is simply a continuation of Both of our committees looked thoroughly at these rules and realized that they were, in fact, historically balanced. And given both the majority and my small minority, full opportunity uh, on some of the items that were uh, not in the rule, the, uh, the uh, consultation approach between the two of us and with staff, and, uh, and believe that, uh, that these procedures uh, can be used, they approach a smooth effective hearing will be used, we believe that those will be positive in a smooth way. Uh, and uh, once again, I'd, I'd like to commend you for the, uh, the one rule change that you did ask for, giving greater uh, transparency and uh, allowing us to uh, give the world, at least all the American people, what they want to see. Thank you. several agreements that you have made that were reached uh, beyond the, the rules of the committee that were being voted on today. Uh, in my estimation, these estimates each greatly increase the productivity of the committee and will change how the majority and minority work together. The first agreement is on the use of the official committee memo in hearings required by the rule. At times in the past, the circulated hearing memo was not the real official memo and we would wake up in the morning of the hearing and find a new or supplemental uh, memo to circulate to greatly change the tenor or direction of the hearing. It is my understanding that this will not be the practice and that supplemental memos will be the exception and not the rule. We certainly understand, of course, that new facts that are relevant can come to light, but that these documents would not be viewed Chairman, I certainly concur and I think the same as the chair, and will ask all of my members to prepare the amendments they wish to produce to my proposal in this hearing in advance, uh, to prepare their amendments uh, and their comments for hearing so that we can make sure that we have cases markup. We will ask the same thing, that they prepare them in a timely fashion.
objection to uh, those paragraphs to see if, in fact, they are generic. And we believe they are, and then we can share them with the majority so that we can reach a common agreement that they are in the scope of the jurisdiction. And if at all possible, in every case, I hope to put them in the same order of operation. Um, that said,
uh, Jeff Flake, who has uh, given up other duties to come here, um, and who has long been somebody who uh, has been known for um, absolutely uh, calling out leaks and earmarks and spending in Congress to a point to oversee that subcommittee and ranking member, Liz Hodgecock, who came and uh, served as a subcommittee and his vice ranking. And as the chairman, we believe we've given you a good lineup of people who can attend the meeting and take the active role.
the bigger project and not one for today. Thank you. 
recognize, delight to see in his contributions that Paul knew. Eighth grade day, he is moved by representing Al Moody, which led to recognizing the significance of Black History Month, which is commemorated annually during the month of Jefferson. H.R. Red 47, moved by representing Ken Poe, which led to express support for the goal and ideas of peace officers in New Orleans, which is commemorated annually on May the 16th. Eighth grade 47, moved by representing Mike Joy, which led to congratulating the National Football League champion Pittsburgh Steelers for winning Super Bowl 44 and becoming the most successful champion of the National Football League history with their record of six Super Bowl titles. Eighth grade 112 was moved by representing Christopher Lee. This measure expresses support for the goal and ideas of America's Park Month and National Wear Red Day. Eighth grade 139 was moved by representing Bill Kelly to commemorate the life and legacy of President Abraham Lincoln and the Black History of Harlem today. H.R. 516 was moved by representing Bill Grant, which vivid designates October 19th Open Day, located at 2105 East State Street in New Orleans, as the current John H. Wilson Jr. Post Office building. H.R. 616 was moved by representing John Barrett, which bill designates the October of the United States Postal Service located at 1287 Frank Wright Street in Harlem, New York, as E. Bon Cleveland Beacon Post Office Building. These are all worthy measures that I urge your adoption with the ranking member of the House. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the minority has reviewed uh, these postal names and resolutions, and we find them equal requirements to the committee. Thank you. 